Hello, everyone. Good to see you here tonight. And uh, we're going to continue on with um, what we are uh, going on in the uh, small catechism. We're moving on to the Apostles' Creed. Okay? So, we will start this evening, if you could take your catechism out. And if you'll turn to page 7. <clears throat> Tonight we'll talk about the first article of the Apostles' Creed. But before we go on and have our lesson about it, why don't we uh, why don't we recite it together? Okay, everybody got it open? Okay, it looks like everybody's got it. Okay, Let, let's recite this together. Count of four. Ready? One, two, four. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, Maker of heaven and earth. What does this mean? I believe that God has made me and all creatures, that he has given me my body and soul, eyes, ears, and all my members, my reason, and all my senses, and still takes care of them. He also gives me clothing and shoes, food and drink, house and home, wife and children, land, animals, and all I have. He richly and daily provides me with all that I need to support this body and life. He defends me against all danger and guards and protects me from all evil. All this he does out of fatherly divine goodness and mercy without any merit or worthiness in me. For all this it is my duty to thank and praise, serve and obey him. This is most certainly true. Okay. Um, last week we talked about uh, God being Father. And remember what we said about what we mean by that, that God is our Father? Who remembers what we said about God being our Father? What does that, what does that mean? Anybody remember? Well, first, because he made us. And second of all, because he is the father of Jesus. And through Jesus, God is our Father, okay? Which is why, as you will find out when we come to the uh, part of the Catechism having to do with the Lord's Prayer, we start the Lord's Prayer how? Our Father, okay? <clears throat> that's how Jesus taught us to pray. So if Jesus taught us to pray like that, then that's how we pray. We can call God Father. Father because he made us and because he is the father of Jesus. And so, so through, through what Jesus has done for us, and because we belong to Jesus, we can call God Father. Okay? So, God is Father. Um, he is called uh, Almighty. In the Creed, right? He is called God the Father Almighty. Meaning what? Anybody want to take a stab at that? What does it mean that God is almighty? Look at the first article of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth. He is almighty because he is the maker. Good. Yeah. 
maker of heaven and earth. Okay? Good. Okay, so what about these terms? Heaven and earth. What do we mean by heaven and earth? Well, earth is easy, right? Earth is, you know, the planet, trees, uh, nature, people, okay? Okay, God made everything that is visible to us. Visible. Did I spell that right? Visible. Yeah. Okay, I did. All right. Um, so, if, if, if earth refers to everything that is visible, heaven must refer to everything that is invisible. invisible. Very good. Yeah. Good. Um, so, we're going to talk about, first of all, the invisible, okay? And we're going to talk about the, the creation within the invisible that is important to all of us first, okay? So, everybody have this? Can I erase it? Good? All right. All things visible and in. Visible. So let's talk about the invisible first. So put your imagination caps on a little bit here. Okay. What do you think God made that is invisible? Anybody want to guess? Right. What's that? Heaven? Well, yeah, I mean, uh, heaven is invisible, right? We can't see it. We will, though, someday, though. And we will also see these particular invisible beings as well. That's what I'm kind of driving at. Invisible beings. Somebody said it. I heard it. Somebody whispered it. Angels. Angels. Thank you. Okay. Uh, angels were created by God. Okay. They are creations just like you and I are, except they do not have bodies like you and I have. We cannot see them, but they do have special roles to play in our lives. Okay. Um, how many of you ever heard of guardian angels? Have you heard of guardian angels before? Okay, yeah. Um, some people have said, you know, I have a special guardian angel. That might be true. I, I don't know. <coughs> I mean, because you can't see them. They're invisible. But they are, they are uh, nevertheless very real. Okay? Um, the word angel... Means messenger. Messenger. Angels are messengers of God. Okay? Um, let's see. So they are they are God's messengers. Uh, they were uh, they were created holy. Okay, they were created holy. Um, however, though, some of them, some of them sinned. Some of them sinned. Um, just like people. Okay, as people, we were created. You know, the original people, Adam and Eve, they were created holy, but then they sinned. Right. Um, same thing with the angels. The angels as created beings, they were created holy, but some of them, not all of them, but some of them sinned. Okay? And who can tell me who the chief of them 
is. Who is the chief of the angels who sin? The devil. The devil. Very good. Okay. Um, <coughs> up here. Some sin. And they are led by They're led by Satan, right? The devil. Okay, so we have we we have uh, holy angels who are messengers of God, and we have what we call the evil angels or the demonic angels, uh, headed by Satan. Okay, and those are um, those are what 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 we call demons. So Satan and demons, okay? Now remember, these are all invisible beings, okay? So when the Bible talks about what we, what we call invisible, the heavenly realms, the Bible will sometimes say heavenly realms, okay? We're talking about the invisible realm, which beings are there are angels and demons. Okay, I'll pause there. Any questions? All right, so you might wonder, well, what did what did they do that they that they sinned? Um well, they actually uh, rebelled. Okay, uh, Satan was the chief one. Satan rebelled against God. Um, now, when you rebel against someone, what are you trying to do? Okay, think, think, think of yourself as a rebel. Okay, think of yourself as someone in rebellion. What are you trying to accomplish? Anybody? Think like a rebel. What are you trying to accomplish as a rebel? Ryan? I'm trying to like, get away from the person, like from the people. Like you don't believe in what the people who are like leading want, and so you're trying to get away from it. Right. Right. Yes. Yeah, you're trying to get away. Uh, that that would be one reason. Yeah, you're you're trying to get away from the from the person who is over you, right? So that 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 is one reason. So, uh, yeah, yeah. Satan want wanted to come out from under the rulership of God. Okay, even though that he's a creation of God, he doesn't want to be ruled by God, right? Okay, so he doesn't want to be ruled by God. So if you don't want to be ruled by God, doesn't that mean that you are trying to be your own God? So really, a rebel, a rebel tries to take the place of the ruler, not only becoming independent of that ruler, but also trying to take over the rulership. Okay, that's what that's what Satan did. Okay, he rebelled against God. We're not told how in the Bible he, he did that, um, uh, but uh, but but he rebelled. Um, and what he did to Adam and Eve when they sinned, what did he teach them to do? Didn't he teach them to rebel? Is that what you were going to say? Disobey. Yeah, to disobey. Yeah, to rebel. Right. And to become their own gods. You can be God yourself. Yeah. Okay? Um, and, and that's when human beings fell into sin. Okay? So we have an idea, though, uh, of what Satan's sin was by looking at what he tempted Adam and Eve to do in sinning. Okay? To become independent of God and to be uh, their own ruler, okay, or to be their own God. 
Okay. So we have uh, we we have Satan in his in his demons. Um, now, Satan and his demons uh, do not go around trying to spook people with scary faces and and uh, um, and you know trying to. Uh, trying to freak you out or anything like that. What they are trying to do is to get you to rebel against God. Okay. Um, in other words, they're trying to get you to sin. Okay. Any questions? Everybody's looking real depressed because of all this. Don't worry, we'll get we'll we'll, we'll get to the good ones. Um, okay, let's talk about the good angels. If you could open your Bibles, please, to Hebrews chapter one. Hebrews is in the New Testament. chapter 1, verse 14. Everybody got it? Who's that? Chapter 1, verse 14 of Hebrews. Raise your hand. Good. Let's take a look at that. Uh, verse 14. And verse 14 is a rhetorical question. Are they not all, and the they is the angels, okay, are they not all ministering spirits sent out to serve for the sake of those who are to inherit salvation? <clears throat> okay, so the, the good angels are sent to minister to us. Okay, they are they're called ministering spirits. In ministering to us, they bring to us the Word of God. Okay, so they they bring God's Word, right? Because they're messengers, okay? They bring God's Word. They do help us. They, they help protect us. They help protect us from <coughs> danger, from evil, okay? Especially the evil angels, okay? They do help us. They do protect us. Um, and most importantly, they serve God. Okay, um, how, do they, how do they serve God? Okay, um, I'm going to direct you to something we do in church. How many of you are familiar on Sunday mornings when we sing, This is the Feast? This is the feast of victory for our God. Okay, um, those, uh, th those that, that song 
is uh, taken from the book of Revelation. And the book of Revelation, uh, in that part of Revelation, uh, tells us that that is what is being sung uh, to God by the, guess who? The angels. Okay? Actually, and not just the angels, okay? Uh, but also everyone who is in heaven. Okay? Um, angels, a, angels do a lot of um, singing. Okay? They are singing to God. They are praising. Praising God. Okay? There's another part in our church service that is a song of the angels. Um, the, uh, the holy, holy, holy. Okay, which is called the, the Sanctus. Um, holy, holy, holy is the Lord God Almighty. Um, I'm trying to think how the words go now. Anybody happen to have a hymnal? I don't. Um, yeah. Um, so, holy, holy, holy is the song of the angels in heaven. So guess what? When we're singing those songs in church, we're singing what they are singing in heaven. Okay? We're actually singing the songs of our own final destination, which is heaven. Okay? So um, we're singing along with the angels and with all the company of heaven, we say. Yep. All right, very good. Any questions? Okay, can I erase that? Everybody good? All right. Okay, so those are the um, those are the invisible beings, you know, besides God, of course, that we're particularly interested in are the angels. Okay. So, what about the visible creation? And who would you think are the most important creatures in the visible creation? Human. Yeah, us. Humans. Humanity. Right. Humanity. Very good. Um, turn, if you would, please, in your Bible to the book of Genesis, the very first book of the Bible. Chapter 1. Genesis chapter 1, verses 26 and 27. <clears throat> and this is, the, this is the creation of humanity. Okay? Everybody got it? If you're at Genesis 1, 26, 27, raise your hand. Everybody there? Okay. So here's what it says. Verse 26, then God said, let us make man in our image after our likeness and let them have dominion over the fish of the sea, over the birds of the heavens and over the livestock and over all the earth and over every creeping thing that creeps on the earth. So God created man in his own image. In the image of God, he created him. Male and female, he created them. Okay, so what does it say about humanity? They were uh, created to uh, to rule, right? Right. They were created to have uh, have dominion and authority. 
They were to rule over the earth. Okay. What else does it say about the humans? God said, let us make man in what? You can say it. What? Yes. Yep. Uh, made in God's image. Okay. Now we're going to talk a little bit about what that means. What, what does that mean to be made in God's image? Um, well, first, you know, we, we say that um, in, the, in the creed, we say, uh, that God made me. If you look on page seven of your uh, of your catechism, I believe that God has made me and all creatures. That He has given me my body and soul, my eyes, ears, and all my members, my reason, and all my senses, and still takes care of them. Okay. Um, God created the first man and woman, and he continues to create uh, human beings. Okay? Uh, how, how does God create human beings? Well, let's put it this way. He didn't make them like he made Adam and Eve. First he made Adam out of the dust of the earth with his finger. And then he made Eve from a rib from Adam. Okay, How does he make humanity from then on? Teresa? I don't know. I was gonna... You were what? I was going to answer the other one. Oh, okay. Ryan? Through us. Through us. He uses, he uses people to make people. Okay. So God continues to create humanity. Okay? Um, all right. Let's see. Um, let's talk about the image of God. What in the world does that mean? What do you think it means? Made in the image of God. Ryan. Like the way God wants it to be. Okay. His image of us. Yeah, the way the, 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 the way God wants it to be. How does God want it to be? How did God want Adam and Eve to be? Yes, Nick. Peaceful? Yeah, peaceful, right? Loyal. How else? Loyal to him. Loyal to him, right? Those are good. Peaceful. Loyal. Anything else, Nick? Happy. Happy? takes care of us, so he wants us to take care of what he has given us. Right. Right, exactly. So, um, to uh, care for each other. Care for each other. He wants us to care for each other. You want a sinless? Sinless. Very good. Sinless, holy, okay. Um, their, their relationship with God was perfect. It was a perfect relationship. So, sinless. Yeah. 
they loved God and loved each other perfectly without sin. Okay, that's what it means to be created in the image of God. All right? So Adam and Eve, the first, the first two, were created in the image of God. Right? What happened? That's right. They they sinned, and uh, once once sin came in, I'm just going to superimpose that on that sin. All of that went away. Okay. Now they were not peaceful. Now they were frightened. Now they weren't they weren't loyal to God. Okay, um, Adam became loyal to himself. Okay, Eve, same way, loyal to herself. Um, they ceased caring for each other. Um, they certainly were not happy. Okay, so uh, sin uh, broke everything up. Okay, and when that happened... Uh, the the uh, the the image. So I'm just going to put here um, the image of God is lost. Okay, they they actually lost the image of God. And then they passed it on to the rest of humanity. Okay, um, the the image of God is is lost. Yep, bad news. Um, does that mean everything is hopeless? At first, it kind of looked that way, right? Um, who can restore the image of God? Can Adam and Eve restore it? Jesus, Jesus very good. Yes, yes. Jesus Restores. I'll just put Jesus restores image. Okay, so um, through through Jesus and our faith in Jesus, God is restoring us to His image. Okay. So it's already begun in our lives. It's already begun because of Jesus. Um, but it will be fully restored once we are in heaven. Then the image will be fully restored. And we will be all of these things. Okay? All right. Anybody have any questions? I, yeah, Tina? Uh in verse 26, it says, then God said, let us make man in our image. Right. Does he mean him and the angels? Or who's our? Uh, oh, very good question. Uh, our is uh, the triune God. Huh? The triune God. Oh, Father. Oh, that's right. Oh, yeah. Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Yeah, those, those, those are understood to be the three persons of the Trinity. Right. Yep. But that is a good question, yeah. Um, okay. Any any, uh, any other questions? Okay. Um, can I erase this? It looks kind of messy, didn't it? All right.
right. Um, let's see. So we have uh, we 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 have God who created us, or who created Adam and Eve in His image, and has restored it to the rest of humanity through Jesus. Okay, so. If, 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 if all that is true, if all that is true, then why is there still evil and suffering in this world? Why is there still evil and suffering in this world? Anybody? Tina. I asked that question. My sister always tells me because we have a choice. Okay, right. Um, yeah. He, he gives us reason and choice. Yeah. He, uh, um, and, and because of sin, we make the wrong choices. Yeah. Um, so there, there is evil and suffering in the world because we, we still live in a fallen world. We still live in a sinful world. Yeah. Um, and because we, we, we still live in a sinful world, uh, evil is derived by um, human selfishness, greed, arrogance, okay? All of that, all of that brings all of this on into the world. Okay, this is why this is why Jesus came, okay? He came to take evil and suffering on himself. Okay? So it, it's not that it's not that God is uh, not caring about it. Because he uh, subjected uh, his own son to it, okay. And remember, Jesus, the second person of the Trinity, God in the flesh, okay. God came and, and suffered Himself on the cross, okay, through Jesus, okay. And then, uh, after dying on the cross, He rose from the dead, okay. Then we have resurrection. Whoops. Resurrection. Um, and this is, the, the resurrection is the victory. Over evil and suffering. Okay, it doesn't mean that that God got rid of all evil and suffering. It means that He has decisively dealt with it. Okay, and our final destiny, if you will, is to be free of sin and evil and suffering. But as long as we are in this sinful world, we will continue to see these things. We will continue to see evil and suffering. And in fact, this is how God really made himself known to the world, is through Jesus in his death and his resurrection. Okay? Um, so what, 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 what does God do with evil and suffering today? Obviously, he allows it to happen, okay? Why he allows it to happen, don't know. That's part of the secret uh, 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 wisdom of God, okay? Janelle? Yeah, that, that to me is a hard one. Because, um, sure. And I don't know if I, I kind of wonder if, you know, because it says that the tree was of knowledge. Yeah. You know? So when I think of that, 
I, I wonder if basically once that was taken in by Adam and Eve, mm -hmm. you, I hate to say you're on your own, like whatever. I mean, I just don't know that God sits and controls everything, like as far as mm -hmm. sending bad things on the Right, know. right, yeah, 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 God, I yes. struggle with, uh, I think more like, yeah, yeah. and maybe I, and please correct me if I'm wrong, but it almost to me, like, once that line by Adam and Eve was crossed, mm -hmm. the world that, as we know, it, it functions, and God will intercede if we ask, and he deems it to be something he Part of his will, intercede. yes. Mm -hmm. I just can't fathom that, you know, he sends evil things. Right, right, right. No, you're 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 right. You're right. Uh, you know. To me, it's like this happens because the yeah. world was open. I mean, they had it perfect. Right, right. And then he said, "Don't," because once you take a bite of that fruit, right, look out. Right. And I, I guess that's how I've always looked yeah. at it, but I yeah. haven't ever really. All right. That. Um, in 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 God's in God's infinite wisdom, he he he, does, he doesn't he doesn't send uh, uh, calamity unless it is in a, in accord with His will, mm -hmm. because there has been times in the Bible when He did send yeah. calamity. Um, but uh, the the evil and the suffering we see today is we call part of God's permissive will. In other words, he doesn't call for it, but he allows it for some reason. Um, yeah, yeah. Um, I, I, I'd like to read uh, Romans chapter 8, verse 28. You don't have to turn to it, but th this is what it says. We know that in all things, God works for the good of those who love him, who have been called according to his purpose. Okay, so um, e e evil, evil and suffering eventually all works out to God's glory uh, and for our, for our good. You know, sometimes we experience these things uh, maybe because we're being disciplined. You know, God sends discipline sometimes. That's why he allows some of these things. Um, uh, and, and, and also uh, to show us that uh, we can't be our own gods, you know, uh, try as we may. But you need so. contrast, too. I mean, how, we would need to know what good is. What well, that's true, too. Bad. Yeah, right. Yeah. Um, we, we, we know that, uh, you know, in, in God is, uh, is perfection, righteousness, holiness. We know that. Uh, in, in heaven, there is no suffering, no pain, no sin. Uh, and th that is, those are things that we will know someday, and we get little glimpses of them um, when we, uh, like, for instance, uh, hear God's word, okay? Uh, that God is still with us, you know, he hasn't abandoned us. Um, that God gives us the gifts of Jesus' death and resurrection. He forgives us of our sin. He shows us in Jesus that uh, death is not final. Okay, it has the appearance of being final, but it's not. Okay, so yeah, I mean, uh, the, the 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 contrast to death is, is resurrection, right? That was the point you were. Yeah. Trying to get at, yeah. Mm -hmm. Overall. Right, right. Yep. All right, so through, through Jesus, um, the image of God is, is being restored in us, okay? That's why we listen when God says, love one another, as I have loved you, when Jesus said that to the disciples, love one another as I have loved you, okay? Um, 
And as Christians, we do love one another. We serve one another. Okay, um, it's not perfect though. It's still it's still broken. Our love for even for each other uh, is still uh, is still not whole because we still have sin in our lives. Okay, Janelle. I was just going to say that makes a lot of sense because the closer you get to Jesus and understanding Him and trying to emulate. Emulate, emulate him, mm-hmm. happy him, mm-hmm. then yeah, you are because you're you're going good. You know? Right, so right, the yeah. The more you happy what he does, the right. better person you become, which is the yep. goal. Yeah. Part of our part of our brokenness is that we we forget what God has done for us a lot. So we need that constant reminder. You know, God. Um, yes, he made you, but he also made you a new creation through the death and resurrection of Jesus. And you are united with Jesus through what? What unites us to Jesus? Sacraments. What are the sacraments? Oh. Baptism. baptism, thank you. Yep. So second year student, you should know that. Baptism. We're united with Jesus in baptism, um, and we're continually fed. Uh, We're we're given Jesus' very body and blood, the very body that was nailed to the cross. We take that in the Lord's Supper. The very blood that was shed um, on the cross is given to us to eat and to drink. Jesus continually makes himself one with us. And that reminds us that we are being recreated in the image of God. And being recreated in the image of God we, as Christians, we love and serve one another. Okay? Um, now, for most of you, you are children and students, okay? That's your station in life right now, and that's where God has you right now. Uh, uh, you're, you're not just any ordinary average student. You are a Christian student, Okay? Uh, which means you use what you have learned in school to serve others. Okay, That might mean serving uh, a teacher. It might mean serving a classmate or a schoolmate. Okay? All right. So, uh, as Christians, we live like the image has been restored. Because it is being restored within us. Okay? Very good. Very good. Any other questions? Good discussion. I like this. No other questions? Okay. So what does God do to take care of you? What does God do to take care of you? Anybody have any, what does God do to take care of you? Anybody? How many of you had dinner yet tonight? How many of you are going to have dinner later? Okay. That one way God takes care of you? Okay, Nick? It says he gives us clothing, shoes, food, drink, house, home, wife, children, animals, and all I have. Yep, right. Everything that we need to support this body and life, and that what it says in our catechism. He gives me clothing and shoes, food and drink, house and home, wife, well, and husband for you ladies, okay? Uh, wife and children, land, animals, and all that I have. So everything in your possession is a gift of God. Right, and the purpose of it is for your uh, for your care. Okay. Yes. What about the poor? What about the poor? How does God take care of the poor? Those who have are supposed to take care of the poor. Exactly. We serve one another. Right. There's plenty to go around. Okay. We give of what we have to the poor. Okay? Yeah, yeah. God is going to continue to use people.
people. And this is part of uh, being restored in the image of God, okay? Uh, that we love and serve our fellow humanity, okay? You know, which is why we serve at the homeless shelter every week on Mondays, you know, people from our church, okay? You know, which is why we send food to uh, uh, downtown Chicago, and we send clothing, and we send all kinds of things that... Um, there's a church that we're helping in Chicago. Um, they have... They're, they're, they're a mission, and they're, they're, they are a soup kitchen, and they, they take rummage, and they sell the rummage to make some money so that they can serve meals to, uh, to the neighborhood. So, okay? So, you know, in, in, in those kinds of ways... You know, those are good ways to help, okay? Um, how many of you have ever heard of uh, Feed My Starving Children? Have you ever heard of that? Okay. It's a Christian organization, okay? This is all part of restoring, uh, God restoring the image in us, okay? That we help, we help others. We serve others. And remember, when we are serving others, who are we ultimately serving? God, right. Good. Okay, so God gives us all of these things so we can take care, so uh, our lives are taken care of. Why does God do this? Why does God do that? Yes. Because he loves us. Simple answer, that's right. Because he loves us. Um, look at your catechism again. The last full paragraph. All this he does out of fatherly, divine goodness and mercy without any merit or worthiness in me. Yep. Yeah. God provides all that to take care of us simply because he loves us. That's it. Okay? So, what do we owe God for that? It is our duty to, what's it say in the catechism? For all this, it is my duty to thank, you. thank and praise, serve and obey him. Right. Just like, just like the good angels do. Okay. All right. Very good. Um. Now, uh, in each of the articles, uh, Dr. Luther concludes each explanation with the words, this is most certainly true. This is most certainly true. There's a, there's a shorter word for that. Anybody know what that word is? Starts with an A. Amen. Amen. Yes. Amen. This is true. That's what the word amen means. It is so. Okay? Okay. Very good. Any questions? Okay. Let me give you a little preview of next week. Next week, we're going to talk about... Creation, the fact that God created everything, how he created it, and how long it took him to create all things. Okay? In contrast uh, to, um, to what is being taught in science nowadays. Okay? So, what's being taught in science nowadays? Evolution. Okay? We'll talk about that next week. Okay? Any, any questions, comments? Okay. Uh, I don't have any big announcements uh, to make at this time. Hold on, though. I'm going to see if I got a text from my wife saying...